Later on this week, Tesla will officially begin deliveries of the Tesla Semi, with its first corporate customer, PepsiCo, due to take ownership of the first production Tesla Semis off the line at the Tesla Gigafactory in Reno, Nevada. And in typical Tesla fashion, the event will be live streamed on Tesla's YouTube channel. It might even be shared on Twitter if Elon Musk has his way, because after all, Twitter is Elon's newest fashion nation. It goes without saying that we're going to learn a lot of new, cool things about the Tesla Semi from the live-streamed event. We're going to see a whole host of news reports covering the launch, and there's no denying the potential impact that the Tesla Semi will have on the big rig world if it manages to deliver on every single promise made of it. But we are also going to see a plethora of videos, podcasts, and social media posts claiming that the Tesla Semi is a world first in many ways. The problem? While it is going to be first in a few areas, it most certainly won't in others. So today I'm going to explore where it will be first and where it won't be. We got ourselves a convoy. For today's video, we're going to rate some of the claims that have already been made and likely will be made of Tesla's semi in the next few days and weeks as being true or false. Since some of these claims will depend on exactly what's said by whom, we're also including the uh, rating and anything rated uh, is likely rated thusly because we need more information to be more conclusive. It's the world's first electric semi! Yeah, no. I, I know we're starting with an easy one here because if you are a regular of this channel, you'll know that we not only have featured electric big rigs on here before, but I've actually driven one. It was so much fun. As of the time of recording this, there are a bunch of electric big rigs, ranging from Class 5 through Class 8, that are already in production. Volvo, Renault, Daimler Trucks, Scania, Exos, just to name a few, are already in production with their own electric big rigs. Even Tesla's sworn enemy, Nikola Motor managed to bring its Nikola Trey BEV to market before Tesla's Semi. The concept, though, of an electric truck is far older than all of these models. The first electric trucks, and we're not just talking glorified pickups here, were built at the turn of the 20th century. Companies like Baker Electric and Studebaker all made electric big rigs of their day, with the latter being capable of carrying 7,000 pounds, or about the weight of a modern, fully specced Ford F-150 Lightning Platinum. So, for this particular claim? Sorry, it's a false. It's the most aerodynamic big rig ever made! One way for vehicles to help achieve a cleaner, greener, safer and smarter future is for them to be as aerodynamic as possible. And with a claimed coefficient of drag of 0.36, the Tesla Semi is most certainly a lot more aerodynamic than most big rigs out there, whose coefficients of drag usually sit around 0.4 to 0.6, according to the various internet resources we looked at. But as the amazing team at Airshaper discussed in this video, link below and please subscribe to their channel, the Tesla Semi's aerodynamic shape makes some aerodynamically smart design choices. And while I'm not going to parrot that video, because you should go watch it after you've watched this one, anyone with even a limited knowledge of aerodynamics like me, for example, can see that there were some smart design decisions made by Tesla, such as making the front end less angular than a regular truck and making the rear of the cab flare outwards to minimise air turbulence between the tractor and the trailer. Is it the most aerodynamic big rig ever made? 
technically, no. At least not if Tesla's aerodynamic drag stays at 0.36. Look back in the history books and there are literally too many aerodynamic style streamliner big rigs from the 1920s and 30s to mention here. And NASA, yes, NASA, did a whole host of top tier scientific investigations into aerodynamic big rig design in the 1970s and 1980s. But the most aerodynamic big rig ever made to date? Well, that was the Shell Starship. I know, I know. Which had a coefficient of drag of 0.25. That's better than most production cars. That said, I believe that Class 8 big rig also made use of a special trailer. And it was powered by diesel, not electric. But... Just stop, because while the Tesla Semi isn't the most aerodynamic truck ever made, it is most certainly the most efficient, based on the fact it's powered by batteries, not suck, squeeze, bang, blow. It's the first truck to have a central driving seat. One of the most raved about features of the Tesla Semi is its centrally placed driver's seat. And it also happens to be one of its most distinctive design features. Instead of a traditional big rig where the driver sits on either the left or the right, depending on the country they're in, the Tesla Semi places the driver much further forward than they would traditionally be, giving them a much wider view of the road ahead while simultaneously reducing the blind spots caused by A-pillars in the driver's primary field of view. This is a clever design move by Tesla in terms of safety and also in terms of manufacturing, because if the driver sits in the middle, you don't have to make two different designs, one for right hand and one for left hand drive markets. But it's not actually the first truck to feature central seating. In fact, as long as trucks have existed, central seating positions have also existed. I could, of course, wax lyrical about the various concepts and limited production vehicles we've seen in recent years, like the futuristic Eno truck or truck 2001, or indeed Walmart's so-called advanced vehicle experience prototype. But I think we'll go back further into history and most of the early electric trucks I mentioned earlier in this video, which all appear from their photos at least, have central driving positions. So sadly, it's a no again here, but honestly, it doesn't stop it being a cool design. It's the first long distance electric big rig. In between interacting with some very unsavory sorts on Twitter this weekend, who seemed unusually obsessed with numbers and their hidden meanings, Elon Musk confirmed that Tesla had completed a successful 500 mile range test with a Tesla Semi carrying a full load, about 81,000 pounds or 36.7 metric tons. That is the legally allowed maximum load for an electric class eight big rig. Electric big rigs do have a slightly higher maximum weight under US regulations because batteries, the truck reportedly did just fine. And right now that makes the Tesla Semi the longest range electric big rig on the market today. That in turn makes this statement absolutely true. But I'd be remiss for not noting that other truck companies, including Mercedes-Benz trucks in Europe and many more, are already testing big rigs in limited test fleets on public roads that have similar promised ranges per charge. So while Tesla may have the edge on range per charge in North America, it may not be for long. It's the fastest charging electric big rig. Do you think for electric big rigs to take off, they'd need to recharge quickly on the road? And Tesla has thought of that by promising its mega charger, a massive specifically designed charging system for the Tesla Semi that is like a Tesla supercharger that's been pumping iron. 
It is, we're told, going to offer upwards of 1.5 megawatts of instantaneous power transfer, recharging 400 miles of range, 648 kilometers, in just 30 minutes. So, yeah, right now, it is the fastest charging electric big rig in production. However, and frankly, this may change by the time Thursday's delivery event happens, there are currently no publicly located mega chargers in the wild. Frito-Lay, which by the way is owned by PepsiCo, does have some installed at various depots, but they are for Frito-Lay semis to use. Let's not forget either that while Tesla's mega chargers will likely be the rapid truck charging tech that everyone talks about, it is not the only one. The MCS, or mega charging standard, which was developed by Turin, is also being deployed around the world, even though it looks a little bit like an alien triangle flying saucer. While there are no high volume production trucks that support the standard yet, MCS is being tested by truck makers and charging providers with public charging stations already on and operational. In fact, there's one just down the road from this studio in Portland, Oregon. So will the lack of Tesla mega chargers in the wild affect adoption rates? In a word, no. The range of the longest range Tesla Semi, 500 miles, is about as far as it is legally possible for one driver to go before they've reached the US federal safety limits on time spent behind the wheel. While there are plenty of long distance tag team drivers, very often spouses who drive together and take turns behind the wheel, even they would be pushed to do more than the range of a long range Tesla Semi in a single day. And as long as they've got access to a reasonably fast charging station overnight, which would be about the same kind of power levels as most of us would just consider a rapid charging station, then they'd just be fine for driving the next day. And on that note, we are done with today's video. If you liked it, you know what to do. And feel free to tip us with a super thanks. The comments are open for your thoughts, as is our Discord chat room, and there are links below. If you want more, subscribe, hit the bell, and follow the links to regularly support us with a YouTube membership or a Patreon subscription. You can also now sign up for our mailing list, and you'll find links to our Kofi Bitcoin and swag store below. And also check us out on Mastodon. We have our very own server. Scrolling on my right is our list of amazing charged up supporters and shout outs go to our self-driving tier supporters, Mike Weeder, Patrick Boyarski, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Michael Goad, Bennett Elder, Andrew Martin, Pedro Muir Pinheiro, Brophy Wolf, Chris and Michael Johnson, Tazla in the Gong, Dan Blair, Peter Dillinger, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Ray Jean Fellows, Denny Hyde, Chris Centaur, and Jim Burness. Finally, out of this world, thanks to our Starman level supporters, Andrew Glenn, Anonymous Freak, JP Fagerback, Joe Bresney, John Lyons, Rory Litwin, Kevin Burrowbridge, Dave Kitchen, Laura Reynolds, Marcel Ward, Matthew Drobnak, Paul Conway, Reggie Watts, Will Graylin, and Ian. I'll be back soon with more videos, as will the rest of the team. But until then, keep evolving.